You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. <laughs> Nationalist News. Headlines of the news today, the 28th of March. Katada could be out by next week. Yet another blow for the silver vote. Labour Party loses ninth councillor. Doctors working within the EU not fit for purpose. Sarkozy on warpath for hate clerics. The Pope meets Castro in Cuba. Australia has its idiots too. Thought for the day, takeovers? or takeaways. UK News. Abu Qatada is one of the many Muslim preachers of hate that could be on a plane soon, booted out by the PC-ridden British government. Abu Qatada could be sent back to Jordan for trial. This possible move by the government was only made after they realised that Italy had only received an £18,000 fine from Strasbourg for a similar case in deporting Mohammed Manai. He was sent home to Tunisia in 2010 in breach of a court order, and officials say they are unable to force Italy to take him back. A spokesman said, once the applicant has been deported, there is nothing much we can do because he is in Tunisia, a country that is not part of the European Court of Human Rights. Last night, the ruling prompted calls for ministers to follow Italy's example and deport Qatada. For many years, successive governments have insisted that Katarga cannot be kicked out of Britain because his human rights would be breached. A British National Party spokesperson has said that although £18,000 is a large amount of money from the taxpayer, it is a small price to pay for getting rid of a dangerous Muslim cleric like Katarga. But in a fair world, it is the political party who let him into Britain in the first place who should be made to foot the bill, not the British taxpayer. Also, another footnote. What about his huge extended family? Will they still be here collecting hundreds of pounds a week from the taxpayer? Outrage has been the focal point of pensioners in Britain this week, with additional news that postage stamps will be going up to 60p for first class and 50p for second class in April. This step has been taken because a 30% price hike will make the Royal Mail more attractive to a potential buyer. For many people with limited access to email and social networks, the Postal Service is still their vital link to the outside world. The Labour Party has lost its ninth councillor. Ellen Herkin from the Canal Ward, who has joined what is described as the third largest party in Scotland, known as Glasgow First. She has now placed Labour's hold on Glasgow down the drain. At last we are free of the Labour Party in Glasgow, one woman has commented. Euronews it has been reported that doctors working in the European Union have not been tested for language and communication skills. The doctors coming from Africa, Asia and the Middle East have not undergone any form of exam before practising. It seems ridiculous that these professionals are sometimes unable to communicate or help the patients in the countries in which they are employed to do so. In Britain there have been problems with doctors coming in from Germany who have been of African origin and unable to speak English or read English directives on medicines. A British National Party spokesperson commented, Why are these people allowed to practice in the UK and Europe, when especially in England, when our own young trained doctors are unable to secure work? Perhaps Europe will come to the rescue, but I doubt it. The President of France, Nicolas Sarkozy, is on the warpath against a radical Muslim cleric, Yusuf al-Qadari, who is an influential Qatar-based Sunni Muslim. Qadawi has been invited to visit France next month by the Union of Islamic Organisations in France, UOIF. Sarkozy was quoted as saying to France Info Radio, I told the Emir of Qatar himself that this gentleman was not welcome in the territory of the French Republic. Qadawi, who hosts a popular show on Al Jazeera satellite television, backed Arab Springs uprising in Tunisia, Egypt and Libya and has launched a fundraising effort for the Syrian opposition. He also has close ties with the leadership of Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood and left that country in the 1960s after being imprisoned by the regime of President Gamal Abdel Nasser. He is accused of having made anti-Semitic and homophobic statements and was banned from entering Britain in 2008. He has been banned from entering the United States since 1999. Sarkozy is obviously running along the same road that has given him a slight lead in the Harris polls since the Toulouse shootings in which Mohamed Mira was killed. World News. 
Pope Benedict XVI has travelled to Cuba to meet Cuban President Raúl Castro. The Pope has had talks with President Castro, wanting a more open society in the communist country. One official explained that there would be no political reform changes in Cuba, despite the Pope's visit. Leaders in the European Union have been trying to urge communist North Korea to stop its missile test over South Korean territory. The North, who is still in conflict with the South since the 1950s, is planning to launch a satellite into space across its neighbor's airspace. South Korea said it will regard any missile which crosses its borders as a threat to its people. The EU is also calling on the North Korean government to dismantle and disarm all its nuclear weapons to keep the region a nuclear-free zone. An Australian group called the Friends of Mernda Heritage Group is being targeted by politically correct liberals after they refused to allow a Muslim school to be built in their area. The Muslim community and clerics have planned their alternative strategy, which is, if a school isn't built, then a mosque will be. Plans to build an Islamic school for 1,200 students in the Sydney suburb of Bass Hill survived objections from residents, the local council and legal challenges, only to be scrapped at the last minute by the New South Wales government. The truth is less palatable. Islamic groups have insisted that the Muslim community in Australia, which is comparatively young and fast-growing, needs more tailor-made education, which is faith-based. There are more than a dozen Islamic colleges already in New South Wales. The state have said there are more pressing needs for the site at Bass Hill and want instead to build a special school to cater for about 40 children with disabilities. One person commented, We are being attacked by the word racist to have our heritage and buildings which date back to 1850 destroyed. Thought for the day, takeovers or takeaways? Well, it has started and so it will finish. The takeover of this country, and indeed any country, where you get a sizable population of the Muslim persuasion. Our Royal Mail, formerly the best in the world, has now hiked up charges to appeal to a buyer. How many bets are on that this buyer will not be from this country? I think I'll open a book on it and I'll be very rich. Of course, at this time in English history, we are the most photographed and taxed people in the world, and we also have to welcome even more pariahs and parasites to our country, not only to live here, but to become our bosses when they are living outside the country. I am all for business acumen, but it should not include my country's traditions and culture, or rather, what is left. With the Royal Mail, it would not be only us, the taxpayers, paying more, but the people who will suffer the most of all will be the posties. Canadian Chief Executive Moya Green already has shed 50,000 jobs in the interests of mechanisation and efficiency, and it seems that with a workforce of 160,000 in place, that process is far from over. Ever heard of asset stripping an entire country? Well, we're in the middle of it, and thanks to successive governments, we do not have a lot left to go. China has our water, Russia our gas, God only knows who has our electric, our once fine steel industry has gone to Indian owners, and the list is endless and miserable. Even our land is being sold over our heads for vast Muslim so-called educational enclaves. Where does it say in the Doomsday Book that we would, as a people, not only allow different religions to flourish, but hand over our country to help them do so? The world in general must think we are stupid to think that a religion, such as Islam, does not want to conquer the world, and indeed many of their radical clerics openly say they want an Islamic Britain and Europe in the shortest time possible. Roll on, boys. Have another few thousand acres of blighty to rule us from. Latest financial house to fall prey to possible Islamification is the RBS. In case you do not know what that stands for, it stands for the Royal Bank of Scotland, not Qatar. According to a report, Britain, or rather UK Financial Investments, has held talks to sell part of its stake in the Royal Bank of Scotland to Abu Dhabi investors, although a multi-billion pound deal is not imminent, apparently. As much as a third of RBS could be sold to Abu Dhabi wealth funds and could lose the taxpayer millions of pounds. Britain pumped £45.5 billion into RBS, leaving the taxpayer with an 82% holding. A deal could see at least 10% and up to a third of the government's stake sold, the BBC said. The Treasury said its strategy was to repair and return RBS to full health. The government's policy has always been to return RBS to the private sector, but only when it delivers value for money for the taxpayer, it said. I wouldn't be surprised to see a small stake sold at below the in price, 
purchase price, but I would be surprised to see a large stake sold, said Mike Trippett, analyst at Oriole Securities. Abu Dhabi, one of the oil-rich states of the United Arab Emirates, could be attracted to the deal after making billions of pounds on a bet on rival British bank Barclays during the financial crisis. They made about £3 billion after investing in Barclays during that crisis in a complex deal that helped the bank stay out of state hands. The main investor then was Sheikh Mansour bin Syed Al Nain, a member of Abu Dhabi's ruling family and the owner of English soccer team Manchester City. The RBS deal, according to Andrew Tyree, head of Britain's Treasury Select Committee, has repeated that this deal is nowhere near a done deal. Dream on, Andy. If you make a country poor enough, sell off its industry, sell off its gold, sell off its people and businesses, take away all the farming heritage and keep paying out monies to foreigners and foreign countries, that is what's known in financial terms as asset stripping on a huge scale. Rather like an estate agent's ring in a town. They hone in on a good property, reasonably priced, devalue it, send people round to debunk it and reduce the price so that the owner is desperate to sell at a much lower than valued sum. This has been going on years. That, along with the shady mortgage lenders, pushed boom and bust to the fore. The same is happening with our country, and we are sleepwalking into fiscal and economic disaster. Now, I'm not all that good with money, but even I can see if a country does not produce anything, even a rising population of its own, and the ability to feed it, that country becomes toxic, and wide open to the wiles of people who do not have our best interests at heart, and here I include the Chinese and anyone who apparently comes to our rescue. What is that old adage? The person who gets you out of the shit is not necessarily your friend? When is the government going to realise that you need banks, but you do not need to be entirely and completely dependent on their goings-on, especially in this world of total and devastating globalisation? I have never paid into the Zionist conspiracy or the Illuminati, but looking at the way things are sliding, I'm changing my mind. I think they have been joined by our friends from the Sands, and we'd all better watch out. Not one of these people above would do anything for anyone who is not of the Jewish persuasion, the Muslim persuasion, or just filthy rich. That is the way of the world today, but it does not have to be the way for England. And finally, oh dear, I feel a Turner moment coming again. Certain cretins who encourage the liberal, Marxist, lovey-dovey feelings have shown their true colours once again. This time, from a spray paint canister. These idiots who think it is their lot in life to harbour and entertain asylum seekers from all over the world have now set them up in one of Britain's best-loved and ancient cities, Norwich. But why? May you ask. Simples. To teach them the art of graffiti. The asylum seekers are now being taught to deface our buildings and train stations, etc. Teaching asylum seekers how to spray walls is a disgrace. It costs council thousands of pounds to remove as well. To say that graffiti is an art form is just pathetic. Now, will they be coming into the country to spray walls as an occupation? I really have given up with this one. I must stop reading it or my language will simply not be allowed. Art? Put an F in front of that and you're nearer the truth. You have been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart and I wish you all a very good night. <laughs>